Hi, welcome to the last section of the course, Counting the Pixels with Histograms. In this section, we will start with computing an image histogram. Then we will be applying lookup tables to modify image's appearance. Next, we will be equalizing the image histogram. After that, back projecting a histogram to detect specific image content. Next, we will be using the mean shift algorithm to find an object. Then we will see how to retrieve similar images using the histogram comparison and finally counting pixels with integral images. So let's begin with the first video of this section, Computing an Image Histogram. In this video, first we will create histograms of gray level images, then define ranges for it, and finally compute it using calchist function. An image is made of pixels that have different values. For example, in a one channel gray level image, each pixel has an integer value between 0, black, and 255, white. Depending on the picture content, you will find different amounts of each gray shade laid out inside the image. A histogram is a simple table that gives you the number of pixels that have a given value in an image, or sometimes a set of images. The histogram of a gray level image will therefore have 256 entries, or bins. Bin 0 gives you the number of pixels that have the value 0, bin 1 gives you the number of pixels that have the value 1, and so on. Obviously, if you sum all the entries of a histogram, you should get the total number of pixels. Histograms can also be normalized so that the sum of the bins equals 1. In this case, each bin gives you the percentage of pixels that have the specific value in the image. The first three videos of this section will use this image. Let's see how to do it. Computing a histogram with OpenCV can be easily done by using the CVCalcHist function. This is a general function that can compute the histogram of multiple channel images of any pixel value type and range. Here, we will make this one simpler to use by specializing a class of the case of one channel gray level images. For other types of image, you can always directly use the CVCalc function, which offers you all the flexibility required. So now, I will explain each of the parameters in details. The initialization of initialized class looks like this highlighted part. So this block of code is used to create histogram of gray level images, and here it prepares default argument for one dehistogram. With defined members computing a gray level histogram can be then accomplished using this method which is highlighted. Now, your program simply needs to open an image, create a histogram 1D class instance, and call the get histogram method that is done here. The histo object here is a simple one dimensional array with 256 entries. Therefore, you can read each bin by simply looping over this array using this code. With the image shown at the start of this section, some of the displayed values would look like this. It is obviously difficult to extract any intuitive meaning from this sequence of values. For this reason, it is often convenient to display a histogram as a function, for example, using bar graphs. These methods create such a graph. The lines compute 1D histogram and returns an image of it. This will compute histogram first, and this will create the images. This block of code will complete it. So here, this line create image representing histogram static method, and these lines will give min and max value. To get histogram size, we have defined this line. This is used for square image on which the histogram is displayed. Here it sets the highest point at 90% of n bins, that is the image heart. And to draw vertical lines, we have used for loop for each bins. Using the get image of histogram method, you can obtain an image of the histogram function in the form of a bar graph that is drawn using these lines. So let's check the result. When you run the program, you will get this result. From this histogram, it can be seen that the image exhibits a large peak of mid-gray level values and a good quantity of darker pixels. Coincidentally, these two groups mostly correspond to, respectively, the background and foreground of the image. This can be verified by thresholding the image at the transition between these two groups. A convenient OpenCV function can be used for this, namely the CV threshold function, which was introduced in the previous section. Here, to create our binary image, we threshold the image at the minimum value, just before it increases toward the high peak of the histogram, that is gray value 70, which is done by this block of code. After adding this code, we will get the resulting binary image, which clearly shows you the background foreground segmentation. The CV calc hist function has many parameters to permit its use in many contexts, which are as follows. Most of the time, your histogram will be one of a single one-channel or three-channel image. 
However, the function allows you to specify a multi-channel image distributed over several images. This is why an array of input images is the first parameter of this function. The sixth parameter, dims, specifies the dimensionality of the histogram. For example, 1 for 1D histogram. In our class implementation, the single channel is channel 0 by default. It is also possible to find a non-uniform histogram. The second last parameter would be set to false in that case. In which case, you need to specify the limits of each bin. Two additional parameters can be specified, both of which are Boolean values. The first one indicates whether the histogram is uniform or not true is the default. The second allows you to accumulate the result of several histogram computations. If the last parameter is true, then the pixel count of the image will be added to the current values found in the input histogram. This is useful when you want to compute the histogram of a group of images. The resulting histogram is stored in the CVMAT instance. Indeed, the CVMAT class can be used to manipulate general n-dimensional matrices. This class has defined a method for matrices of dimension 1, 2, and 3. This is why we were able to write this code. When we have to access each bin of the ID histogram in the getHistogramImage method, Note that the values in the histogram are stored as float values. The histogram 1D class presented in this video has simplified the CVCalc function by restricting it to a 1D histogram. This is useful for grade level images, but what about color images? So now we will see computing histograms of color images. Using the same CVCalc hist function, we can compute histograms of multi channel images. For example, a class that computes histograms of color BGR images can be defined as follows. In this case, the histogram will be three-dimensional. Therefore, we need to specify a range for each of the three dimensions. In the case of our BGR image, this is for B, this is for G, and this is for R. The three channels have the same 0 to 255 range. With the arguments thus prepared, the color histogram is computed by this method. A three-dimensional CVMAT instance is returned. When a histogram of 256 bins is selected, this matrix has 256 rays to 3 elements, which represents more than 16 million entries. In many applications, it would be better to reduce the number of bins in the computation of the histogram. It is also possible to use CV sparse mat data structure, which is designed to represent large sparse matrices without consuming too much memory. The CV calc hist function has a version that returns one such matrix. It is, therefore, simply to modify the previous method in order to use CV sparse matrix like this code. The histogram in this case is three-dimensional, which makes it more difficult to represent. A possible option to illustrate the color distribution in an image could be by showing the individual R, G, and B histograms. 